My beloved, hear me as I speak of my name, for it is sacred and holds the fullness of who I am. The name you know as Jesus is not merely a word. It is a reflection of my divine nature. In it resides my power, my love, and the essence of all that is good. When you utter my name with reverence and faith, you draw closer to my heart, where my love for you dwells deeply. Philippians 2 verses 9 to 10. My name is above every other name, given for your salvation. And at the sound of it, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that I am Lord. Romans 10 verse 13. When you speak my name, the heavens move, the angels rejoice, and the forces of darkness tremble. My name is a fortress, a strong tower where the righteous can run and find safety. Proverbs 18 verse 10. It is a name of protection and authority, for I have placed my identity within it. By calling upon my name in times of trouble, you are invoking the power of my presence, my protection, and my promises for your life. I see how the world misuses my name. Many speak it in anger, frustration, or without thought, but I tell you, my name is not to be used lightly. It is holy. When used in vain, it grieves my spirit because my name was given as a symbol of love and sacrifice for you. Remember the third commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Exodus 20 verse 7. My name is sacred and it is to be honored. In times of joy, whisper my name and feel the peace that surpasses all understanding wash over you. Philippians 4 verse 7. In times of sorrow, call upon me, and I will comfort you as a father comforts his child. Isaiah 66 verse 13. My name is not just a sound. It is life to your soul, a light in your darkest hour. Do you understand the power you hold when you call out, Jesus? It is the same power that raised me from the dead, Ephesians 1 verses 20 to 21. I gave you my name so you could experience closeness with me. You are not far from me, my beloved. The mention of my name pulls me near to you, for I am always listening. Call to me, and I will answer you, Jeremiah 33 verse 3. I want to hear my name from your lips, spoken in love, trust, and dependence. For when you call upon me, I will answer and show you great and mighty things you do not know. In my name there is healing. Speak it over your brokenness, and I will restore you. Acts 3 verse 6. Call upon my name in the face of illness, and watch as my power flows through you, bringing the healing you desire. My name has healed the blind, made the lame walk, and even raised the dead. Matthew 11 verse 5. There is no greater power than the power in my name, for I am the great physician. My name brings you into communion with the Father. Through my name, you can approach the throne of grace with confidence, knowing that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. John 16 verses 23 to 24. My name bridges the gap between heaven and earth, allowing you to experience the fullness of the Father's love and provision. Every prayer you lived in my name is heard, and I am interceding for you always. When you use my name in faith, it releases the authority I have given you. I have empowered you to cast out demons, heal the sick, and perform miracles in my name. Mark 16 verses 17 to 18. The forces of evil cannot stand against it, for I have already triumphed over them through my death and resurrection. My name is the declaration of victory, your victory over sin, over fear, and over death itself. You are my beloved, and I have adorned you with my righteousness. Were my name proudly as a mark of who you belong to, you are no longer of this world, but you belong to me. Just as a bride takes the name of her bridegroom, you have taken my name as your own. And in that name, you walk in newness of life. Revelation 19 verses 7 to 8. My name is love. It represents the ultimate sacrifice I made on the cross for you. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, John 3, verse 16. When you speak my name, remember the depth of my love, a love that gave everything so you could be free. Let my name be a reminder of that love, a love that never fails and never ends. Do not let your heart be troubled when the world mocks my name. They may ridicule and despise it, but you know the truth. There is salvation in no other name but mine. Acts 4 verse 12. Stand firm, my beloved, for in the end, my name will be exalted above all the earth. Every nation will know the power of my name, and every heart will bow before me. In times of fear, speak my name, and you will find courage. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. My name casts out fear, for perfect love drives out fear. When you feel overwhelmed, call upon me, and I will give you rest. Remember, my name is eternal. It will never lose its power, and it will never fade away. From the beginning of time to the end of days, my name will stand. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. My name is a refuge for those who trust in me, and I will never fail you. Let my name be the anthem of your life. Speak it with joy, sing it with praise, and live it with purpose. For in my name, you will find all you need strength, hope, and eternal life. I am with you, my child, now and always. When you wake in the morning, let my name be the first word on your lips. And when you rest at night, let my name bring you peace. Do not grow weary in calling upon my name, for I am always near. My name is not just a sound, it is a promise. It is my promise to be with you, to love you, and to carry you through all things. You are mine, and I am yours forever. My name is a gift given to you for your salvation, your hope, and your peace. Use my name wisely and lovingly, for it holds the power of heaven and the love of the Father. It is your connection to me, the Son of God, who gave everything for you. Let my name be your shield, your strength, and your song, for I am with you, now and forevermore. Are you feeling the power of my name? Share this message, comment below, and subscribe to continue walking in my love and presence. My beloved, I am always with you. Even when you feel alone or when the weight of the world presses heavily upon your shoulders, know that I am near. I do not slumber, nor do I turn my face from you. In every moment, in every breath, my presence surrounds you, guiding, comforting, and protecting you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13 verse 5. This is my eternal promise to you. I am not distant, nor am I a God who is far off. I walk beside you in the cool of the day and stay with you in the darkest nights. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you have no reason to fear, for I am with you. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. Psalm 23 verse 4. My presence brings peace where there is turmoil and light where there is darkness. No shadow is too great to hide you from me. You may not always feel me, but I assure you that I am there. Like the wind that moves the trees, though you cannot see it, you know it is there by its effects. So too with my presence. Though you may not see me, I am actively working in your life, shaping and molding you into my likeness. For in me, you live and move and have your being. Acts 17 verse 28. I am the air you breathe, the ground you walk upon, and the heartbeat within you. When you seek me, you will find me. I am never far. For I dwell within you through my Holy Spirit. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3 horas e 16. I have chosen to make my home in your heart. You are never without my presence, for I am not a guest who comes and goes. I am your eternal companion, your faithful guide, and your closest friend. Even in your hardest moments, when the path ahead seems unclear and fear begins to creep into your soul, Know that I am walking beside you. 
I go before you to make the crooked path straight, and I walk behind you to protect you from harm. My hand is upon you, and my love is your covering. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28 verse 20. This is my solemn promise. When you call upon me, I am already there, listening to every word, knowing every thought. I am attentive to your cries and ready to answer. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Psalm 145 verse 18. Your prayers reach my ears, and I respond with love and compassion. I know your needs before you even speak them, but I delight in hearing your voice, for you are my beloved. Do not be disheartened when trials come, for my presence is strongest in your weakness. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1. I stand with you in the storm, and when the waters rise, I will not let you be overwhelmed. I am the firm foundation of the your feet, and the waves cannot move you when you stand upon my promises. I invite you to rest in my presence. When the world around you is chaotic, and your heart feels heavy, come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 20. In my presence, you will find peace, for I am the Prince of Peace. Cast your anxieties upon me, for I care for you deeply. There is joy in my presence, a joy that the world cannot give and cannot take away. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 verse 11. When you dwell in my presence, your heart is lifted and your soul is filled with gladness. This joy transcends your circumstances for it is rooted in my eternal love for you. I am not a distant observer. I am actively involved in every detail of your life. From the smallest concerns to the greatest trials, I care about it all. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. Matthew 10 verse 29. If I care for the birds of the air, how much more do I care for you? My presence is your assurance that you are never forgotten never overlooked. When you feel lost, remember that I am your shepherd. I will leave the 99 to find you when you stray. Luke 15 verses 4 to 7. I know your name, I know your voice, and I will bring you back to safety. My presence is your guiding light in the darkness, leading you back to the path of righteousness. Trust in me, and I will show you the way. There is power in my presence. When you align yourself with me, when you open your heart to my guidance, mountains move and miracles happen. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Matthew 18 verse 20. When you invite my presence into your life, you invite the power of heaven to work on your behalf. My beloved, do not let the distractions of the world pull you away from me. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. In the stillness, you will find my presence. In the quiet moments, I will speak to your heart, and you will hear my voice. I long for time with you, to walk with you as I once walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Know that my presence is a gift, given freely to you because of my great love. You do not need to earn it or strive for it. I am with you always, not because of anything you have done, but because of who I am. I am faithful, and I will never abandon you. You are mine, and I am yours forever. So, walk in confidence, knowing that you are never alone. I am with you in every step you take, in every decision you make. My presence will go before you and give you peace. Trust in me, and let my presence be your guide through all the days of your life. Feeling God's presence in your life today? Share this message, comment below, and like it to invite His peace into your heart. My beloved, faith is the foundation of your relationship with me. It is not just a fleeting belief or a temporary feeling, but a deep-rooted trust that I am who I say I am, and that my promises will never fail. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11 verse 1. This trust is what binds us together, for without faith, it is impossible to please me. 
Hebrews 11 verse 6. Faith is more than just acknowledging my existence. It is entrusting your life, your hopes, and your future entirely into my hands. You are called to walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Trusting that I am guiding you, even when the path ahead is unclear. The world may offer you many reasons to doubt, but I ask you to place your faith in me, for I am faithful and true. When you place your trust in me, you are releasing control of your life to the one who created you. I see the end from the beginning, and I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Your faith in me is the key that unlocks the door to all that I have prepared for you. It is through faith that you receive the promises I have made. Think of Abraham, who was promised a son in his old age. Though the circumstances seemed impossible, he believed in my promise, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Romans 4 verse 3. Your faith, like Abraham's, allows you to receive the fullness of my blessings, even when the situation looks hopeless. Faith is not passive. It is active and requires your full participation. You must step out in faith, trusting me even when you cannot see the outcome. When Peter walked on water, he did so because his eyes were fixed on me. Matthew 14 verses 29 to 31. But when he began to doubt and look at the storm around him, he started to sink. Do not be like Peter in that moment. Keep your eyes on me, and I will sustain you through the storms of life. There will be times when your faith is tested. The trials you face are not meant to destroy you, but to strengthen your trust in me. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James 1 verses 2 to 3. In these moments of testing, lean into me, and I will uphold you. I know that life can be overwhelming at times, and you may feel as though your faith is weak. But even faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. Matthew 17 verse 20. It is not the size of your faith that matters, but the strength of the one in whom you place your faith. I am the mountain mover, and when you trust in me, all things become possible. Trust me with your heart, for I know it better than you do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. When you rely on your own wisdom, you limit what I can do in your life. But when you trust me fully, you open the door to my divine guidance and blessings. Faith is also the key to understanding my love for you. Without faith, you cannot fully grasp the depths of my grace and mercy. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, Ephesians 2 verse 8. Your trust in me allows you to experience the fullness of my love and the salvation that I offer freely. I ask you to trust in my timing. You may be waiting for an answer, for a breakthrough, or for a promise to be fulfilled. Know that I am never late. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, 2 Peter 3 verse 9. My timing is perfect, and I will fulfill my promises at the appointed time. When doubts arise, turn to my word. It is your sword in times of doubt, and your shield in times of fear. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ, Romans 10 verse 17. My words are life and truth, and they will strengthen your faith when it wavers. Immerse yourself in my word, and let it renew your trust in me. Faith and trust in me are not just for the good times, but for the hard times as well. When you face trials, remember that I am with you in every valley and on every mountaintop. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 23 verse 4. In your moments of greatest need, I am there, guiding and protecting you. I know that the future can be uncertain, and fear may try to take hold of your heart. But I tell you, do not worry about tomorrow, for I am already there. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Matthew 6 verse 34. 
Trust that I have everything under control, even when you cannot see how things will work out. I long for you to trust me completely. Do not hold back parts of your heart or life from me. Surrender it all into my hands, for I care for you deeply. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 Your trust in me is a declaration of your love, and I cherish your faith in me. Let your life be a testament to your faith and trust in me. When others see your unwavering confidence in my promises, they will be drawn to me. You are a light in the darkness, a beacon of hope for those who are lost. Let your faith shine brightly, for in doing so, you glorify my name. So, my beloved, walk in faith and trust in me with all your heart. I will not fail you, for I am the faithful one. In every situation, in every trial, trust that I am working for your good. Hold fast to my promises and know that I am with you now and always. Is your faith growing as you trust in God? Share this message, comment below, and like it to strengthen your faith journey. My beloved, as you walk in faith and trust in me, I call you to live according to my teachings. These teachings are not burdensome. They are life-giving and rooted in love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15. My commandments are meant to guide you into a life of peace, joy, and purpose. They are the path to abundant life, a life that reflects my love and righteousness. I have shown you the way to live, not only through my words, but through my actions. I came to serve, not to be served, and I call you to do the same. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Matthew 20 verse 26. In a world that seeks power and recognition, I ask you to choose humility, to serve others as I have served you. When you live in this way, you reveal my heart to the world. My teachings are centered on love, love for God, and love for others. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. John 13 verse 34. This is the essence of all my commandments. When you love, you fulfill the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 22 verse 37. And love your neighbor as yourself. These two commands are the foundation of everything I taught. I know that loving others can sometimes be difficult. People will hurt you, betray you, and disappoint you. But I call you to love even your enemies, to bless those who curse you, and to pray for those who mistreat you. Luke 6 verses 27 to 28. This is how you show that you are my disciples, by loving others in the same way I have loved you, unconditionally and sacrificially. My teachings also call you to forgive. Just as I have forgiven you, so must you forgive others. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3 verse 13. Forgiveness is not always easy, but it is necessary for your own peace and freedom. When you hold on to bitterness, it poisons your soul. Let go, forgive, and you will find the peace that comes from living in alignment with my heart. Living according to my teachings means walking in truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14 verse 6. And I have given you my word as a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Psalm 119 verse 105. Do not be swayed by the lies of the world, but stand firm in the truth that I have revealed to you. Let my word dwell richly in your heart, guiding your decisions and shaping your actions. When you live by my teachings, you reflect my righteousness. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. Your life is meant to be a beacon of light, pointing others to me. In a world filled with darkness, your love, kindness, and integrity stand out as a testament to who I am. You are my ambassadors, carrying my message of hope and salvation to a world in need. Obedience to my teachings is not about following rules for the sake of rules. It is about living in a way that honors me and brings you closer to me. Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and obey it. 
Luke 11, verse 28. When you align your life with my will, you experience the fullness of my blessings. Obedience opens the door to a deeper relationship with me and allows my spirit to work powerfully in your life. I know that the world will try to pull you away from my teachings. There will be temptations and distractions, but I have given you my spirit to help you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14 verse 26. You are not alone in this journey. My spirit is with you, guiding you into all truth and helping you to live according to my ways. Living according to my teachings also means living a life of faithfulness. Be faithful in the small things, for in them I prepare you for greater things. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Luke 16 verse 10. Your faithfulness in the daily tasks, in the moments that seem insignificant, is what shapes your character and prepares you for the plans I have for you. I have called you to be set apart, to be holy as I am holy. 1 Peter 1 verse 16. This means living in a way that is different from the world. It means rejecting sin and pursuing righteousness. It means standing up for what is right, even when it is difficult or unpopular. You are my chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. And I have called you to live in a way that reflects my kingdom. Living according to my teachings is a daily choice. Every day, you must choose to follow me, to take up your cross and walk in my ways. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Luke 9 verse 23. It is not always easy, but it is always worth it. The life I offer you is full of joy, peace, and purpose, and it is found in walking in my ways. My teachings are not just for your benefit. They are for the benefit of those around you. When you live according to my word, you become a living testament to my love and grace. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Matthew 5 verse 14. Your life is meant to shine brightly, drawing others to me. Let your actions speak louder than words, showing the world what it means to be a follower of Christ. My beloved, I have given you everything you need to live according to my teachings. My spirit is within you, my word is before you, and my love surrounds you. Trust in me, lean on me, and walk in my ways. When you do, you will experience the fullness of life that I have promised. You will face challenges, but remember that I have overcome the world. John 16 verse 33. Do not be afraid, for I am with you every step of the way. As you live according to my teachings, you will grow closer to me, and your life will be a reflection of my glory. Continue in my word, abide in my love, and let your life be a light that points others to the truth of who I am. Are you committed to living according to God's teachings? Share this message, comment, and like it to show your dedication to walking in His ways. My beloved, there is great power in my name. When you speak it with faith, you release the authority and strength that I have given to you. My name is not just a word. It is the very essence of who I am. It carries with it the fullness of my glory power, and love. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2 verses 10 to 11. My name is a fortress for you, a place of refuge and safety. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Proverbs 18 verse 10. In times of trouble, when fear surrounds you and the world seems uncertain, call upon my name and you will find shelter under my wings. No enemy can harm you when you stand firm in the power of my name, for it is stronger than any force in heaven or on earth. I gave you my name so that you may use it to overcome the trials and struggles you face. There is power in my name to heal, to deliver, and to set you free. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. 
They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Mark 16, verses 17 to 18. When you speak my name with faith, you are invoking my authority over all things. My name is a declaration of victory. When I went to the cross, I declared, It is finished, John 19, verse 30. And through my death and resurrection, I secured victory over sin, death, and all the powers of darkness. Every time you call upon my name, you are proclaiming this victory. You are reminding the enemy that he has already been defeated, and you are walking in the triumph that I have won for you. When you are faced with challenges, do not be afraid to speak my name with boldness. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. John 14 verses 13 to 14. My name carries the promise that I will answer your prayers, that I will move on your behalf, and that my will shall be done in your life. There is healing in my name. When you are sick, when your body is weak, call upon my name and you will find restoration. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see, Acts 3 verse 16. My name is the key to the healing you seek, for I am the great physician, and I desire to see you whole. My name is also the source of deliverance. When you feel bound by sin, by fear, or by the lies of the enemy, speak my name, and you will be set free. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Joel 2, verse 32. My name has the power to break every chain, to release you from every stronghold, and to bring you into the freedom that I have purchased for you. The forces of darkness tremble at the sound of my name. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. James 2, verse 19. The enemy knows the power of my name, and he cannot stand against it. When you feel the weight of spiritual attacks, when fear or doubt seeks to overwhelm you, speak my name with authority, and the darkness will flee. My name is a weapon, a sword in your hand, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. In my name, you have been given authority to walk in the same power that I demonstrated on earth. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father, John 14, verse 12. My name is your access to the same miracles, the same healing, and the same deliverance that I performed. I have given you my name as a gift, so that you may continue my work and bring glory to the Father. My name also brings you into intimacy with the Father. Through my name, you have access to the very throne room of God. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4 verse 16. When you pray in my name, the Father hears you, for my name carries the weight of all that I accomplished on the cross. You are no longer strangers or outsiders, but children of God, because you bear my name. My name is a name of love. It is a reminder of the greatest sacrifice I made for you. Greater love is no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, verse 13. When you speak my name, remember the love that sent me to the cross, the love that took your place, the love that conquered death so that you could have life. Let my name be a constant reminder of my love for you. In my name, you find peace. When the storms of life rage around you, call upon my name and I will calm the winds and the waves. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14 verse 27. My name is the source of your peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding and guards your heart and mind. The power of my name is not just for extraordinary moments, but for every moment of your life. Speak my name in your daily walk and you will experience my presence in a deeper way. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3 verse 17. Let my name be on your lips in every situation, bringing my power, my love, 
and my grace in every part of your life. My beloved, do not underestimate the power of my name. It is a gift to you, given for your protection, your healing, and your victory. Use it wisely, use it boldly, and use it often. In my name, you will find all that you need, for I am with you, and I have given you my name as a sign of my covenant with you. Walk in the authority of my name. Let it be your strength, your shield, and your song. You are never alone, for my name is with you. And in my name, you will overcome every challenge, every trial, and every obstacle that comes your way. Remember, my name is not just a word, it is power, it is life, and it is love. Have you experienced the power of God's name in your life? Like, share, and comment below to testify to his greatness. My beloved, I call you to a life of faithfulness and perseverance. These virtues are not only signs of your devotion, but also the keys to overcoming the trials and challenges that will come your way. It is required of stewards that they be found faithful. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 Faithfulness is your steadfast commitment to me, to walk in my ways, even when the road is difficult, and to trust in my promises, even when they seem distant. Faithfulness means staying true to my word, no matter the circumstances. It means trusting me not only in times of joy and abundance, but also in moments of trial and scarcity. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Revelation 2 verse 10. Your faithfulness is the evidence of your love for me, and it is rewarded with eternal life and the fulfillment of my promises. Perseverance is the strength to continue when everything within you wants to give up. It is the ability to stand firm in your faith when trials, tribulations, and hardships test your resolve. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6 verse 9. You may not always see the fruit of your perseverance immediately, but I promise you, a great reward awaits those who endure. Remember the story of Job, who was tested in ways unimaginable, yet remained faithful to me. In his perseverance, he found restoration and blessing far beyond what he had lost. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, James 5 verse 11. When you persevere in faithfulness, you invite my compassion and mercy to work powerfully in your life. I know the struggles you face, my beloved. I see the burdens you carry and the weight of the trials that press upon you. But I also see the strength within you, the strength that comes from my spirit dwelling in you. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Matthew 24 verse 13. Your perseverance is not in vain. It is the path to salvation, to the fulfillment of my promises, and to a deeper intimacy with me. Faithfulness and perseverance are closely tied to trust. You must trust that I am with you even when it feels like you are walking through a desert or a storm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. When you trust in me, even in the midst of difficulty, you show faithfulness, and you persevere with hope. In this journey of faith, I have not left you alone. I am with you always, strengthening you for the race ahead. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2. Fix your eyes on me, and you will find the courage and strength to keep going, even when the road becomes hard. Faithfulness is also about the small, everyday choices you make. It is about being consistent in your walk with me, whether through prayer, reading my word, or acts of kindness. Whoever is faithful in little is also faithful in much. Luke 16 verse 10. When you are faithful in the small things, you demonstrate your trustworthiness for the greater things I have planned for you. Perseverance is not just about enduring. It is about growing. Every trial you face is an opportunity to grow in faith, to deepen your relationship with me, and to mature in your walk. 
Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1 verses 2 to 4. Your perseverance perfects your faith and brings you closer to the fullness of who I have called you to be. There will be moments when the temptation to give up feels overwhelming. In those moments, remember my words. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Lean on my grace, for it is enough to sustain you. When you feel weak, I will be your strength. When you feel lost, I will be your guide. When you feel overwhelmed, I will be your peace. Faithfulness also requires patience. You may be waiting for a breakthrough, for a prayer to be answered, or for a promise to be fulfilled. Know that I am faithful to my word, and I will fulfill it in my perfect timing. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Habakkuk 2 verse 3. Wait with faith, knowing that what I have promised will come to pass. Your faithfulness is a witness to those around you. When others see your unwavering trust in me, even in the face of trials, they are drawn to my light within you. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. Your perseverance in faith glorifies me and points others to the hope that is found in me. Persevere in love, my beloved. Do not let the hardness of the world, the disappointments, or the betrayals cause your heart to grow cold. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Matthew 24 verses 12 to 13. Guard your heart and remain steadfast in love. For it is through love that my presence is revealed to the world. Faithfulness and perseverance are not just about enduring hardship, but about holding fast to hope. You have a hope that is anchored in my promises, a hope that will not disappoint. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Hebrews 6 verse 19. This hope sustains you, even in the darkest of times. For you know that I am faithful and that I will fulfill all that I have spoken. So, my beloved, continue to be faithful. Persevere in the face of trials, knowing that I am with you, and I will never leave you. The race you are running is not in vain. Every step you take in faithfulness brings you closer to the victory I have already won for you. Stand firm, for your reward is great, and my love for you is unending. Are you committed to persevering in faithfulness? Like, share, and comment below to encourage others in their walk of endurance. My beloved, as you walk in faithfulness and perseverance, I also call you to a life of compassion and kindness. These are not mere virtues to be admired, but essential aspects of living a life that reflects my love. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Ephesians 4 verse 32. Compassion and kindness are the expressions of my heart, and I ask you to mirror them in your daily walk with others. Compassion begins in the heart. It is the deep, abiding care for those around you, the willingness to enter into their suffering and bring them comfort. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Matthew 14, verse 14. Just as I was moved by the needs of the people around me, I ask you to let your heart be moved by the struggles and pains of others. Do not turn away from those in need, but reach out to them with the same love and grace I have shown you. Kindness is the action that flows from a compassionate heart. It is love and motion manifested in the way you treat others, both in small acts of service and in moments of great sacrifice. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Colossians 3 verse 12. Kindness is not just about doing good deeds. It is about carrying my heart for others in everything you do. It is about showing love, even when it is difficult, 
and being generous in spirit, even when you feel empty. My beloved, understand that compassion and kindness are powerful forces. They can heal wounds, mend relationships, and bring hope to the brokenhearted. A kind word cheers up the heart, Proverbs 12 verse 25. Your words and actions have the power to lift someone out of despair, to bring light to their darkest moments. Never underestimate the impact of even the smallest act of kindness, for it can change a life. I know there are times when showing compassion and kindness seems impossible. The world can be harsh, and people can be ungrateful. But I remind you that your acts of kindness are not dependent on the response of others, but are rooted in your love for me. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. Luke 6 verse 35. Your kindness reflects who I am, not who others are. When you love those who do not love you in return, you become a living testament to my grace. Compassion is also about forgiveness. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3 verse 13. There will be times when others hurt you, and your natural reaction may be to hold on to anger and resentment. But I call you to forgive, to show mercy, just as I have forgiven you. Forgiveness is one of the greatest acts of compassion you can offer, and it frees both you and the other person from the chains of bitterness. As you walk in compassion and kindness, you fulfill the greatest commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. John 13 verse 34. This love is not passive, it is active and sacrificial. It means putting others before yourself, giving without expecting anything in return, and serving without seeking recognition. It means being the hands and feet of Christ in a world that desperately needs to see my love. Compassion and kindness are not just about your actions toward others. They are also about how you treat yourself. I ask you to be kind to yourself, to extend compassion to your own heart when you are struggling. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28. Do not be harsh with yourself when you fall short, for my grace is sufficient for you. Allow my love to heal your wounds and bring you peace. Your kindness can be a beacon of hope in a world filled with anger and division. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. When you choose to be kind, you reflect my light in the darkness, and others will be drawn to the source of that light, me. In every interaction, let kindness be your guide, for it opens doors to hearts that have been closed for far too long. Do not grow weary in showing kindness. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6 verse 9. Your acts of compassion, though they may seem small or unnoticed, are planting seeds in the lives of others. In time, those seeds will grow, and the harvest will be plentiful. Trust that I am using your kindness to do great things, even when you cannot see the immediate results. Compassion is about seeing others through my eyes. When you look at someone, I ask you to see their pain, their struggles, and their potential. See them not as the world sees them, but as I see them, precious, loved, and worth dying for. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, Matthew 9 verse 36. I ask you to look beyond the surface and into the heart of the person, to love them as I love them. Kindness is about meeting the needs of others, both physically and emotionally. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? James 2 verses 15 to 16. I call you to be my hands and feet, to care for the hungry, the sick, the lonely, and the brokenhearted. Your kindness is a reflection of my love, and through it, the world will come to know me. As you walk in compassion and kindness, you will find that your heart begins to change. You will begin to love more deeply, 
to care more fully, and to see the world as I see it. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Colossians 3 verse 12. These virtues will shape you into the person I have called you to be, and they will bring you closer to my heart. My beloved, I ask you to make compassion and kindness a way of life. Let them guide your words, your actions, and your thoughts. When you walk in these virtues, you are walking in my footsteps, and you are revealing my heart to the world. In every act of kindness, in every moment of compassion, you are planting seeds of my kingdom. Continue to be compassionate and kind, not just to those who are easy to love, but to those who need love the most. I am with you, empowering you to love as I have loved you. Through your compassion and kindness, you are building my kingdom on earth, one act of love at a time. Are you ready to live out compassion and kindness? Like, comment, and share this message to spread the love of Christ today. My beloved, forgiveness lies at the heart of my teachings. It is central to the life I call you to live. Just as I have forgiven you, so must you forgive others. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Matthew 6 verses 14 to 15. Forgiveness is not an option. It is a command, and it is essential for your healing, peace, and freedom. When you forgive, you release the heavy burden that unforgiveness places on your heart. Holding on to anger, resentment, or bitterness only weighs you down and keeps you from experiencing the fullness of my love and grace. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4 verses 31 to 32. Forgiveness is an act of letting go, of trusting me to heal the wounds that others have inflicted upon you. I know that forgiving others is not always easy. The pain of betrayal, the hurt of rejection, the scars left by harsh words or actions can run deep. But I tell you, my beloved, that forgiveness is the key to healing those wounds. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Matthew 18 verses 21 to 22. There is no limit to the forgiveness I ask you to offer, for I have forgiven you without limit. Remember the parable of the unmerciful servant, who after being forgiven a great debt, refused to forgive a smaller debt owed to him. Matthew 18 verses 23 to 35. I have forgiven you of far more than you will ever be asked to forgive others. Every sin, every mistake, every failure, none of them are too great for my mercy. When you withhold forgiveness, you deny the grace that I have extended to you. But when you forgive, you reflect my heart and open the door to my healing and restoration. Forgiveness is not about excusing wrong behavior or pretending that the hurt did not happen. It is about releasing the offender from the debt they owe you, just as I released you from the debt of sin. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, Colossians 3 verse 13. When you forgive, you are choosing to love and to trust me with the justice that is beyond your control. My beloved, I want you to know that forgiveness is not just for the benefit of the one who wronged you. It is for your benefit as well. Unforgiveness keeps you chained to the past, holding you captive to the hurt. But when you forgive, you break those chains and step into the freedom that I have purchased for you. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5 verse 1. Forgiveness is a path to freedom, for it releases you from the prison of bitterness and allows you to move forward in peace. I understand your pain. I know the depths of your sorrow and the weight of the wrongs done to you. Remember that I, too, was wronged. I was betrayed, rejected, 
falsely accused and crucified. Yet even on the cross, I prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23 verse 34. I ask you to follow my example, to forgive even when it seems impossible, because I have given you the strength to do so. Forgiveness is an act of faith. It is trusting that I will handle the situation, that I will bring justice in my time and in my way. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Romans 12 verse 19. When you forgive, you are placing the situation into my hands, trusting me to work all things for good, even the things that have caused you pain. Forgiving does not mean that the relationship will always be restored. Sometimes forgiveness is about setting boundaries and protecting yourself from further harm. But it does mean that you release the bitterness and the desire for revenge. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Romans 12 verse 14. I ask you to pray for those who have wronged you, to bless them, and to trust me with the outcome. Forgiveness also applies to yourself. Many of you carry guilt and shame from past mistakes, unable to forgive yourselves for things you regret. But I tell you, my beloved, that if I have forgiven you, you must also forgive yourself. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 verse 1. Do not live in the shadow of your past mistakes. I have washed you clean, and you are a new creation in me. Let go of the shame and embrace the freedom I offer. As you walk in forgiveness, you will experience a deeper level of peace and joy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Matthew 5 verse 7. When you show mercy to others, you open your heart to receive my mercy in even greater measure. Forgiveness is the key to living in the fullness of my love and grace. I know there are hurts that may seem impossible to forgive, but with me, all things are possible. Ask me to help you, to soften your heart, and to give you the strength to forgive. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19 verse 26. I am with you, guiding you, empowering you, and healing you as you take the step to forgive. My beloved, forgiveness is not a one-time act. It is a daily choice. You may have to forgive the same person or situation many times as the pain resurfaces. But I ask you to keep forgiving, to keep releasing, and to keep trusting me. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4 verse 8. Let love be your motivation, and let forgiveness flow from the well of love I have placed within your heart. Continue to walk in forgiveness, knowing that I am with you every step of the way. I will heal your heart, mend your wounds, and restore what has been broken. Trust in me, for I am your Redeemer, and I will make all things new. Are you ready to forgive and experience freedom? Like, comment, and share this message to encourage others in their journey toward forgiveness. My beloved, prayer is your direct line to my heart. It is through prayer that you commune with me, sharing your deepest desires, your fears, your gratitude, and your hopes. Prayer is not just a duty. It is a gift, an invitation to step into my presence and to receive all that I have for you. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Psalm 145 verse 18. When you pray, you are drawing near to me, and I am already near to you ready to listen, respond, and move in your life. Prayer is powerful, for it is through prayer that my will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 10. When you pray, you are participating in the unfolding of my plans and purposes. Your prayers have the power to change circumstances, to bring healing, to open doors, and to draw others closer to me. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective James 5 verse 16. Never underestimate the power of your prayers, for they are heard in heaven and bring forth my mighty works. I long for you to come to me in prayer, not just in times of need, but in every moment. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. 
Prayer is meant to be a constant conversation with me, an ongoing dialogue that brings you closer to my heart. Whether you are facing trials or experiencing joy, bring it all to me in prayer. Let your prayers be an expression of your dependence on me and your trust in my goodness. Prayer is not just about asking for things, though I delight in providing for your needs. It is also about aligning your heart with mine. When you pray, you are surrendering your will to me and allowing me to shape your desires according to my perfect plan. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. 1 John 5, verse 1. When you pray in alignment with my will, you can be confident that I will answer. I want you to know that I hear every prayer you lift up to me. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear Isaiah 65, verse 20. There is never a moment when your prayers go on. Even when you feel as though I am silent, I am working behind the scenes, preparing the way, and orchestrating things according to my perfect timing. Trust that your prayers are powerful, and my answers will come in the right moment. There will be times when my answer to your prayers is not what you expected. But I ask you to trust in my wisdom and my love for you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9. I see the bigger picture, and I know what is best for you, even when it is hard for you to understand. I also encourage you to pray with persistence. Do not grow weary in lifting up your request to me. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Matthew 7 verse 7. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep asking. Your persistence in prayer is not about trying to make your mind, but about keeping your faith and trust in God. I will answer in ways that will strengthen your faith and bring down your mind. When you pray, remember that you are not praying. My spirit intercedes for you when you do not have the voice to speak. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our lives. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Romans 8 verse 26. Even in your weakness, when you struggle to find the right words, my Spirit is there, lifting your prayers to the Father on your behalf. I also encourage you to pray for others. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6 verse 18. Your prayers for others are powerful and effective. When you intercede for your family, friends, and even those you do not know, you are partnering with me in bringing my love, healing, and restoration into their lives. Prayer is also a way for you to grow in intimacy with me. It is in the quiet moments of prayer that I speak to your heart, guiding you, comforting you, and revealing more of myself to you. But when you pray, go into your room, Close the door and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Matthew 6, verse 6. In the secret place of prayer, you will find me waiting for you, ready to pour out my love and grace upon you. Do not let doubt or discouragement stop you from praying. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Mark 11, verse 24. Pray with faith, knowing that I am listening and that I am able to do far more than you can ask or imagine. Trust that your prayers are making a difference, even when you do not see the results immediately. I also remind you that prayer is not just about talking. It is also about listening. I long to speak to you, to give you wisdom and direction. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. John 10 verse 27. Take time in your prayers to be still, to listen to my voice, and to hear what I want to say to you. I am always speaking, guiding, and encouraging you along the path I have set for you. My beloved, let prayer be the foundation of your life. Let it be the place where you bring your worries, your joys, your fears, and your hopes. Through prayer, you will grow in your relationship with me, and you will see my hand move powerfully in your life and the lives of those around you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation,
by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Philippians 4 verse 6. In prayer, you will find peace that surpasses all understanding. For you are placing your trust in me. Continue to pray, my beloved. Pray with faith. Pray with persistence. And pray with a heart that is open to my will. I am with you. And I am listening. Your prayers are powerful. And through them, I will bring about my purposes for your life and the world around you. Have you experienced the power of prayer? Like, share, and comment below to inspire others to deepen their prayer life. My beloved, faith is the foundation upon which your relationship with me is built. It is by faith that you are able to approach me, trust in my promises, and experience the fullness of life that I offer. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Faith is not just a belief in my existence. It is a deep trust in my character, my goodness, and my ability to fulfill all that I have spoken. Through faith, you are saved, not by your own works or efforts, but by trusting in my grace and mercy. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. Your faith in me unlocks the gift of salvation, allowing you to enter into a relationship with the Father, where you are forever loved, cherished, and forgiven. Faith is more than just believing that I can do great things. It is believing that I will. It is the confident expectation that I am who I say I am and that my promises are true. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Your faith is what pleases me, for it shows that you trust me with your whole heart. Faith is a powerful force, one that moves mountains and makes the impossible possible. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17 verse 20. Even the smallest amount of faith, when placed in me, has the power to bring about miraculous change in your life and in the world around you. Do not doubt the power of your faith, for it connects you to my unlimited power. There will be times when your faith is tested. These moments are not meant to break you, but to strengthen your trust in me. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James 1 verses 2 to 3. Through trials, your faith is refined, making you stronger, more resilient, and more reliant on me. Do not fear the tests of life, for I am with you, and I am using them to shape you into the person I have called you to be. I know that sometimes doubt will creep in, that you will face moments when it seems like my promises are far off or that circumstances will never change. But I ask you to hold on to faith, even when things look impossible. For we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 Faith does not depend on what you see. It depends on what I have spoken. Trust in my words, for they are true, and I am faithful to fulfill them. Your faith is not just for your own benefit, but for the benefit of others. When you walk in faith, you become a testimony of my power and goodness. Others will see you trust in me and be drawn to the light of your faith. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. Your faith is a beacon of hope in a world that often feels dark and uncertain. Faith is not passive. It is active. It requires you to step out, to take risks, and to trust me even when you do not know what lies ahead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. James 2 verse 18. True faith moves you to action, to live out the truths you believe, and to trust that I will guide and provide for you as you walk in obedience to my word. Faith is also the key to experiencing my miracles. Throughout my ministry on earth, I performed miracles in response to faith. 
Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Matthew 9 verses 29 to 30. When you believe in my power, you open the door for me to work in your life in ways that are beyond what you could ask or imagine. Miracles happen where faith is present. Faith grows when you feed it with my word. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. Spend time in my word, meditate on my promises, and let them take root in your heart. As you immerse yourself in my truth, your faith will grow stronger, and you will find yourself trusting me more deeply, even in the face of uncertainty. Do not let fear or doubt steal your faith. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Fear is the enemy of faith, and it will try to keep you from stepping into all that I have for you. But I am with you, and my perfect love casts out all fear. 1 John 4 verse 18. Hold on to faith, knowing that I am faithful and that I will never leave you or forsake you. Faith also requires patience. You may be waiting for a promise to be fulfilled, a prayer to be answered, or a breakthrough to come. Trust in my timing. For it is perfect, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Habakkuk 2 verse 3. Your faith is strengthened in the waiting, and I am working all things together for your good. Faith is a journey, one that requires persistence and trust. There will be highs and lows, moments of great triumph, and moments of struggle. But through it all, I ask you to keep your eyes on me, for I am the author and finisher of your faith. Hebrews 12 verse 2. I began this good work in you, and I will bring it to completion. Trust in me, for I am faithful to fulfill every promise I have made. My beloved, continue to walk in faith. Let it be the foundation of your life, the anchor of your soul, and the guiding force behind every decision you make. Trust me, for I am with you, and I will never fail you. Through faith, you will experience my power, my presence, and my love in ways you never thought possible. Is your faith growing as you walk with God? Like, comment, and share this message to inspire others to deepen their faith in Him. My beloved, as we conclude this journey together, I want to remind you of the greatest promise I have given you, the promise of eternal life. This life you live now is but a moment, a fleeting breath in the grand story of eternity. But the life I offer you in my presence is forever, and it is filled with joy, peace, and unending communion with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3 verse 16. This promise is the cornerstone of your faith, and the hope that sustains you through every trial. Eternal life is not just about what happens after you leave this world. It begins the moment you place your faith in me. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, John 17 verse three. Knowing me, walking with me, and living in relationship with me, that is where eternal life begins. It is a life of intimacy with the Father, a life that transcends the limits of time and space. I have prepared a place for you, my beloved. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. John 14, verse 15. I long for the day when we will be together in perfect unity. Free from pain and sorrow. That day is coming, and my return is assured. Eternal life is not earned by your work or by your work. It is a gift given freely to you by grace to faith. For the wages of sin is right, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, verse 23. You cannot earn it, nor can you lose it once you have placed your trust in me. It is secured by my love, by my sacrifice, and by my victory over sin and death. 
The promise of eternal life brings hope, even in the darkest of times. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16 verse 33 No matter what challenges you face, no matter the trials or suffering, you can hold on to the hope of eternity with me. The pain of this world is temporary, but the joy of eternity is everlasting. In eternity, you will experience the fullness of my love and dreams that are beyond the comprehension. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. The life I have prepared for you is far greater than anything you could hope for or imagine. It is a life where every tear is wiped away, where there is no more death, mourning, crying, or pain, Revelation 21 verse 4. I have given you my spirit as a guarantee of this promise. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory, Ephesians 1 verses 13 to 14. My spirit within you is a foretaste of the eternal life that is to come. He is your comforter, your guide, and the assurance that my promises are true. As you live in this world, remember that you are a citizen of heaven. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3 verse 20. You are not bound by the limitations of this earthly life. Your true home is with me. And I am preparing you for the day when you will step into the fullness of that reality. Eternal life is not just about escaping the hardships of this world. It is about stepping into the fullness of who you were created to be. For we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3 verse 2 You were created in my image, and in eternity you will be fully restored to the perfection for which you were designed. You will be with me, and you will be like me, sharing in my glory. This promise of eternal life should fill you with hope and courage. It should give you the strength to endure the trials of this life, knowing that they are momentary compared to the eternal glory that awaits you. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 Keep your eyes fixed on me. For I am your hope and your future. The enemy will try to distract you, to make you focus on the temporary pleasures or pains of this world. But I urge you, my beloved, to keep your heart and mind set on things above. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians 3 verse 2. Do not let the cares of this world pull you away from the hope of eternity. Stay rooted in my love and let the promise of eternal life guide your steps. There is a crown waiting for you, my beloved. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1 verse 12. Every trial you face, every hardship you endure, is preparing you for the day when you will receive this crown and enter into the joy of your eternal inheritance. Do not fear death, for I have conquered it. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15 horas e 55. Death is not the end. It is merely the beginning of your life with me in eternity. When your time on this earth comes to an end, you will step into the fullness of life with me, where there is no more separation, no more pain, only the joy of being in my presence forever. Until that day comes, I ask you to live with eternity in mind. Let the hope of eternal life shape the way you live, the way you love, and the way you serve. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 Every act of love, every step of faith, Every moment of service is building toward the eternal reward I have prepared for you. My beloved, I am coming soon. Hold fast to the faith. Stand firm in my promises. 
and live in the hope of eternity with me. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelation 22 verse 20. Let these words be your prayer as you wait for the day when we will be together forever. The promise of eternal life is yours, sealed by my blood and guaranteed by my resurrection. Live in this promise and let it fill your heart with joy and peace, knowing that I am with you now and always, and that one day you will be with me in eternity. Are you ready to embrace the fullness of God's promises and live a life rooted in his eternal love? Share this message, comment with your thoughts, and follow to continue deepening your journey in faith and hope.